Hello everyone, today we are going to show you the assembling and lowering of IPI sensors. So before we start, we have IPI sensors here. Uh, we are just going to show you uh, the sample of assembling of three IPI sensors. And uh, before starting, we have to give the numbers of each IPI sensors. Like the Encardioride convention, uh, we give the sensor number one to the bottommost sensor. So here we have given this particular uh, sensor serial number that is 181565. This we have given the sensor number one. So this would be installed at the bottommost. Then comes a sensor above the number one that would be given as number two. Then the sensor above two would be number three. So, so on. So this is how we follow the uh, numbering of IPI sensors. Then we have suspension kit. Then this is the bottom wheel assembly. Always installed at the bottom most of the assembly and this would be used as the reference point. Now before starting the lowering of IPIs, we need to decide on the A plus side, wherever the excavation is going on. We would be installing the top wheel of the IPI in that direction. So this inclinometer casing has four grooves and uh, uh, we suppose that this groove is A plus, that is the excavation is going on this side. If we don't know where the movement is predicted, then we follow the convention of north and south. The A plus side of the IPI sensor would be at the A plus side. So let's get started. So this groove would be the A plus. We'll take one spacer tubing or the connecting tube, whatever you call it. And we would be fixing the bottom wheel assembly with the connecting tube or the spacer tube. Fixing this with the Allen bolt. This is the washer that is being used. And we would be tightening it with the Allen's. We would then uh, fix the safety wire rope. Now the safety wire rope is fixed. And we would be taking it along with the connecting tube. We would be using the cable tie. Now guide this bottom wheel assembly in the direction of A plus. That is the fixed wheel or the top wheel. That would be in the direction of A plus. Guide it in the A plus groove. And as you can see, there is a hole in between this connecting tube. And you would be using this retaining rod and inserting it inside the hole and resting it on top of the inclinometer casing. Now fix sensor number one. That would be the bottommost sensor in the inclinometer casing. Just insert this uh, in the connecting tube and use this Allen bolts and nuts to connect it. Use the washer. Now take care of the cables, the male and female Secon connector cables of the IPI sensor. This, as this is the bottommost sensor, so the so the female part of uh, this IPI, uh, female, uh, the female uh, connector of this IPI sensor would be going uh, would, would remain at the bottom. Now we would be fixing another connecting tube. This is a half meter connecting tube. We would be connecting it. We would lift the assembly up and take out the retaining rod and take the male end of the IPI sensor to the topmost part along with the safety wire rope. Slowly we would uh, be lowering the first sensor Make sure the top wheel or the fixed wheel would be in the A plus groove and lower it carefully so that it doesn't come out from the groove. Now rest it again with the retaining rod in between the connecting tube. 
Now take another sensor that is number two. Fix it with the same procedure as you have fixed the first one. Connect the male Secon connector end of the first IPI sensor with the female of number two IPI sensor. And now you need to make a loop of the extra cable by and tighten it with the cable tie. Make sure you don't forget the safety wire loop to route it along with the IPI assembly. Now take another connecting tube. Here we have half a meter connecting tube. Put it on top of the second IPI sensor. Connect it with the Allen bolt. Make sure that you leave a slack of the topmost uh, cable of the IPI sensor so that it doesn't get damaged or doesn't get stretched. Guide it carefully in the A plus groove. And rest it with the retaining rod. Now comes the topmost sensor, that is the number three. This would be coming at the top of the borehole. And you would connect it in the same way as you have connected the other two sensors. And again, connect the male Secon connector of the second IPI sensor with the female Secon connector of the third or the topmost sensor. Interconnecting would make a daisy chain of these IPI sensors and only a single wire would be coming at the top of the borehole. Now we would be connecting the male Secon connector of second sensor with the female Secon connector of the topmost sensor or the number three sensor. This would make a daisy chain of the series of IPI sensors and only a single cable would come out from the borehole for the whole assembly. Now we would making a loop again of these IPI sensors. Now lift the whole assembly and remove the retaining rod and lower it carefully. This is the suspension kit and this is the spacer tubing. We need to connect it together and the whole assembly would be uh, working as a suspension kit and this would be used at the topmost part of the IPI assembly and the whole chain of IPI sensors would be suspended on this uh, suspension tube. Now the suspension tube uh, would be fixed at the topmost part of the assembly. We would again lifting the whole assembly and remove the retaining rod and lowering it holding all the cables and the safety wire ropes along the assembly make sure that the fixed wheel or the top wheel is is guided in the A plus groove and it doesn't snap out from the groove Use the cable tie to guide these cable and the safety wire rope. And there are four grooves in this suspension kit. You can uh, you can route the cable in between these grooves. Now you can lower it. As you can see, only one cable has come out of the whole assembly. The male Secon connector of the whole assembly would be connected to the top connecting cable. This is the top connecting cable. One end is the female Secon connector and the other end, it has three wires. As it is based on SGI 12 uh, technology, so, so these three wires would be connected to the junction box. 
so we will be connecting the top connecting cable with the cable of the IPI and you can route this extra cable accordingly as per the site conditions make sure that the safety wire rope which has come out from the bottom wheel assembly this should be fixed at a safe location so that you can uh, safe location this is the protection cap you can place it on the top of the inclinometer casing after the completion of uh, whole uh, assembly you can place it on top and the wires and the safety wire rope would be routed through this protection cap i'm just going to show you a sample how this would be routed this would be routed along with the safety wire rope and you could fix it on the top of the inclinometer casing and then the junction box would come and you can connect this uh, free wire of ipis assembly in this junction box so now i'll show you the connection of the junction box uh, this end of the junction box would be connected to the protection cap it would be tightened from inside this is the junction box for ipi sensor one end of the ipi assembly that is this three wire would be routed inside this uh, bigger hole so i'm going i'm just going to show you the connection from this end the wire would be coming to the junction box and there are three terminals at one end at the other end also there are three terminals so you can follow the convention of red black and green red is 12 volt power black is ground or common and green is for signal so you can connect this now this is the connection of ipi assembly at one end of the junction box at the other end you would be connecting a 3 core cable or a 6 core cable and that would be connected to the and that would be connected to the uh, and that would be connected to a and that would be connected to our uh, encardiorite model esdl30 data logger and then the configuration of these ipi sensor will follow